Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I am going to do a first impression on the Dermacol foundation. I think it's called the uh, Film Studio Baranov Prague. I think that's just where it's from. This claims to be waterproof, have an SPF of 30, and hypoallergenic. And most importantly, and I think the reason everyone's wanting a first impression on this, is because it's super, super, super high coverage. It comes in a little squeezy tube like this. It feels very, like, stiff. Kind of like a little pink tube. Uh, for those curious, I'm in the shade 208, which is not the lightest shade, because the lightest shade is darker. This is the second lightest shade, which is lighter. It's weird, it's one of those things. I got mine on Amazon, and if I can find it available on Amazon, I'll go ahead and link it down below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and zoom in and begin applying. I imagine this may be on the drying side just because most really high coverage foundations are. Um, so today for my primer, I'm going to use the Hangover RX primer. I'm only going to use half of my face. This isn't like a primer primer. This is just like a kind of extra moisturizer. My skin is moisturized though, by the way. So I'm going to go ahead and do this side of my face. So how you open it is you just pull the cap off, puncture the hole. I've just done that and then the product will come out. Um, I'm going to start off with a small amount just because we're going to build up. Um, I haven't even really squeezed it and the product's just kind of coming out on its own. I'm just going to use that much. Very, very thick. Like, it actually looks like a thick paint. I have a Real Technique sponge that I will use on parts of my face and the Oval 7 brush by Artiste on other parts of my face. I just kind of like to bop around and see in different areas because my cheeks are more of a problem area than my forehead, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna dot it on with my finger first though, and I'm gonna do it on the prime side. I've used like half of what I put on the back of my hand. I'm gonna go with a brush first, I think. Oh, wow. I mean, I knew this was full coverage, but holy crap. Oh my God, did you see how well that covered just on my chin? And that's like way too much on my chin. Oh. All of the freckles on my nose are totally gone. It obviously got rid of my redness. Uh, I'm gonna use the sponge on my forehead and see if that differs. Oh wow, that took away a lot of coverage. I don't like the sponge. That was a quick decision. Might have to actually put a little bit more up there now. I do wanna go ahead and press in what's on my cheek just with my sponge. I feel like that's just the thing I do. Yeah, as you see, it already took away um, coverage on my chin. I'll build that up in a minute again. Wow, that's really high coverage. Uh, as far as match, it's a tiny bit dark, but I feel like I could get away with it as long as it does not oxidize. So I'm going to try on the non-prime side. I'm actually gonna zoom you in a lot while I blend this one in just so you can really see. Okay, so I'm just gonna start on my cheek. I'm putting super light pressure to avoid brush strokes. Um, it, it's essentially blended. Like, I'm gonna do some fine blending, but that was really, really fast. Um, right now, and I, it might be because of the sponge I'm about to pat on this side, but I do definitely see a difference between the primed and the unprimed. It looks really nice. I can see this already. Um, maybe not wearing the best, just because how it looks around my nose and on my nose, which is a really dry area for me. I feel that it's gonna break up and like, I don't, I don't know, I'm like not giving it a fair shot, but it reminds me of foundations that tend to do that, just how it's sitting right now. Uh, but as far as coverage goes, like holy crap, crazy good coverage. And once I dab a sponge over everything after I've applied it with a brush, I feel like it makes it look a little more natural. Still super high coverage, but it doesn't look incredibly cakey. You can tell you're wearing foundation, but I have worn much thicker foundations. And I still have a bunch on the back of my hand. I like used way too much. This will last you a really long time. I feel like this lighting is making me look much more tan than I am. Okay, I think I fixed the light setting a little bit more. Sorry if that was off. I'll try to fix it in editing so there's not a big difference. It has a dimmy matte finish. I expected this to be really matte. It didn't say it, I just expected it. I think that's because I'm so used to high coverage also equating with really matte. The finish is natural, I will say. It's covered my dry areas, as you saw around my chin. I had breakouts and it was just, it's really dry there. But it's, it's looking pretty damn good. So I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup right now. It is uh, about noon on the dot, just about. Uh, today's Father's Day, so I'm doing whatever my dad wants to do. But he's a homebody, so we may not do very much. But anyway, I will check in with you. Uh, FYI, I have combination skin. 
I have a lot of dry areas. Currently, really just dry right now. I do live in Houston. It is extraordinarily hot. Humidity is always high. I actually do want to show you with powder on what it looks like. A lot of times foundation just really changes once you put powder on. I kind of don't want to because I love the finish, but I'm terrified not to. I'm doing a little bit of baking under my eyes. It's a thing I never do. I'm going to go in with my tried and true Physicians Formula Talk Free translucent powder. I'm gonna use this Maybelline brush, which is really compact. Uh, I'm gonna zoom you in as I do this. So as you can see, it just, it's starting to look more and more natural. And I don't know if that's because a little bit of my powder fell down to here, um, but it's it's still like that dimmy matte, almost matte, very like what a natural skin finish looks like, even though it's full coverage and you can tell you're wearing foundation. Do you get me? still manages to have that, um, I don't even want to call it luminosity, but like skin-like finish beneath powder. But by the way, this powder, I use it in every first impression for foundations that I do. Um, but I would say that this has also a skin-like finish. It's not totally matte. It's not satin, but it's just like this in-between place. Okay, so now the whole spiel, I'm gonna save. I will come back to you. It's about noon, just for reference. Aloha, guys. What time is it? It is about three o'clock now, so just three hours later. I did have a burrito for lunch because my father's choice was Mexican food. Let's see how the chin's looking. So I lost a little bit right here as far as coverage goes. I have laugh lines. I never have laugh lines. I haven't been smiling that much. Are my nose are looking dry. Um, I'm already looking a little bit shiny on my forehead. My cheeks look wonderful. And by cheeks, I mean like this part. Here, not so much. It's looking a little bit thick. Like, thick is just the best word, and it's only been three hours. Oh no, <laughs> I'm worried. Uh, I'm gonna take my glasses off so you can see, but now I'm blind. Um, so around here where my glasses were, I don't fault the foundation for that. Every single foundation does that. Like right here, I have a little bit of milia, I think of milia at least, and it's emphasizing that. It's starting to break up a little bit right here. When I move the mirror away, like even like romantic partner distance, it looks perfectly fine. But when I have it close up, I can tell that it doesn't look so hot. On camera, looks great. Uh, no complaints there. But in person, if you were to look really close, it looks heavy. I feel like this is the kind of foundation that I will mix in with other foundations. I'm, I'm not super overwhelmed with it right now. Um, honestly, with how this is going, I'm not sure I'm gonna keep this on as long as I normally do. Um, I'll probably, I'll shoot for the eight hour mark. Uh, I'm probably not gonna keep it on for like my normal 12 though. Yes, my days are actually that long. <laughs> hey guys, it is about 10 o'clock. Forgot my phone downstairs, but I did just look at it. I'm, I'm really wanting to take the makeup off. It doesn't look as bad as I thought it would look based on like that first three hour mark. I was like, oh no. But it really doesn't look that bad. It didn't oxidize, which A plus. Let's get really up close and personal though. Around my nose, it's really not looking good. On my cheeks, around my milia, it really does emphasize any texture that you have. So not a huge fan of that. Yeah, it's not the worst, it's not the best. It's just, it's okay. If you can get this for a fair price and you're interested in something that's super high coverage, go for it. If you want something along the lines like the Cover FF, Cover FX drops, but I plan on using this kind of in lieu of the Cover FX drops just because it's such a high coverage thing, which is what I would honestly recommend it for. I think it would work better um, in a carrier foundation. It's doing pretty good. It's been on for quite a long time. Felt like it's held up okay. Um, I'm desperate to take my makeup off, so I'm sorry that I'm not here for too terribly long. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I will see you next time.